Welcome to StartupRad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and welcome, everybody. This is Joe from StartupRadio.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today, I'm bringing you one of the winners of Content Shift, the accelerator program of the German book publishers and printers association. Therefore, I'd like to welcome Ben from Rido. Hey, how you doing? Hi, I'm fine. How are you doing? I'm doing good as well. You may notice that we are both smiling. Simple reason. Uh, my little son just crashed our first <laughs> attempt at the recording. So this is take two. Um, nonetheless, we are here in February and actually, um, you are the winner of Content Shift, which took place at the Frankfurt Book Fair already last year in October. The simple reason you are only published by now is that we really had problems to sneak in the content because we get so many startup requests by now, but I still wanted to do this. Now that we get all of that out of the way, let's talk a little bit about you. I can tell um, you are actually... So you graduated from university, actually in political science, and then surprisingly, you went on to work in the food sector. How did this happen? Yeah, it was kind of a journey in the last three to four years. Um, I started in 2015, my, my first semester in political science, and it was a lovely study, uh, time especially, but the most important part is that I had a lot of free time. So it was not very hard to get through the first courses. And I'm a little bit a person who always has to do something. So at the second semester, I started to work as a journalist. And then I worked in the uh, university paper. And in the third semester, I started with a friend. And we talked in the evening. And in Bavaria, it's the situation that after 8 p.m., you can't buy any food. All supermarkets are closed. And after 8 p.m., you just have to go to McDonald's or just buy really, really expensive food at uh, any kind of place like a restaurant. And, so. and we were students, so we had no money. And one evening after one or two beers, we sat uh, together. And we thought, why do we can't buy any good food, any eggs or something just for a quick supper? And then we just Googled a little bit in the evening and we found, okay, there are solutions. There are like um, snack automats, like vending machines for snacks. And there are vending machines in the out of the cities at farms where you can buy eggs and cheese and all those stuff, but they're not in the city. So we started in uh, at my uh, study time that we brought those vending machines for farming people. We brought them to the city, to Munich. And this was my first startup, which held for around about three and a half years. And we had a kind of journey. And one and a half year ago, we sold it to our customers. Mm -hmm. uh, why did you stop it? And can you take us along the journey? Because at one point, you stop with the food vending machines. And then you got into novels uh, yeah. with AI. <laughs> Just tell us how this <laughs> jump happened. Sure. Um, food economy is like a very, very special business. Um, and we were at one point where it was okay. The business was running, but it was not super good. We had a lot of problems because we both work full time. Uh, and we had like a side hustle, the whole first startup. And there was this one point where we had to decide if we do it on a full risk. So we completely join our startup. Um, or do we think, okay, it's not the big thing. It's not, we'll, we won't explode in the next month or years. And the problem was that we had a few team members uh, who were doing the logistics and who were working uh, as a part time already. But we, we weren't expecting the next big thing. We just had, okay, it was running okay, but it won't be like this super thing. So we uh, both said, okay, okay, we will stop it. We will sell it. And then we will focus on the next thing. And yeah, this was then the point where I just looked around and I had a friend who said, okay, I need someone who's doing marketing, who's good and telling people stories. And this is where I met Jonathan. 
And this is where it's also the point where Reader came into my life. Mm -hmm. ha mm -hmm. Have you always been a big fan of books? I had. Uh, there was uh, like a few years in my life, um, around about the Harry Potter time, where I read like lots of books and I couldn't stop it. And through my first year uh, in South Africa, where I worked there as a PR agent, um, I stopped because I wasn't really able to find any books which meet my taste and this is like a process a slow process where i really stopped uh, reading a lot and where i just watched tv more and netflix came into my life and changed my habits quite a lot um and when i started to think about rido and i thought about my own journey of books and my own journey how i started and stopped reading um i really could sympathize with the problem which we are trying to solve that I wasn't able to find books which really meet my taste. Um, if you just think about the situation at the moment, if you, especially someone who already reads a lot like you, um, trying to find a next novel, what can you do? You can go to your bookstore, you can go to Amazon, maybe Talia or any big book stores online, and you just go there and there are over 70,000 new releases every year in Germany. Just, just think about how long it will take just to look to each cover, which take 10 seconds. It will take two days to just look through all those 70 covers to find any. And this is something which I, as a customer, before I started working with Rio, also had a big problem with. I wasn't able to find any, find any books which I wanted to read. And this is also the point where Rido started to really make, made lots of sense in my, my head. I understand you can basically classify books letting your how is it called is it the reader machine or do you have a special name for the ai inside of it <laughs> um we, we call it the motion profile because we had this problem in mind that we we assumed and we thought in the first process before we had data that lots of people have the same problem like as we have that they wanted to read they wanted to read more but they're just not able to find any and then we said okay great how uh, can we help people to find books which really meet their taste? And the first step was to think about what do I want to have out of a book? What is the, the thing, the point, why do I read? And we, try, we, we really try to simplify it. And we always say, if you open a book, you don't want to read. You want to laugh. You want to cry. In the simple point, you want to feel emotions. And this is the point where we say, okay, this, this completely makes sense. So we try to know which emotions are in which books. And to do this, to know which emotions are in which books, we developed an artificial intelligence to analyze those Rido emotion profiles. Mm -hmm. I understand. So basically the AI gets to read all the books. Just one question. Does it right now work only in German or does it also work in other languages? Um, at the moment, we are only analyzing uh, German books, but the foundation of the AI is also though that we can translate it to English -led literature. But the point is, which makes us really unique and which is our USP especially, we don't analyze the books because this is really complicated and also uh, the science of NLP or the National Language Processing is not that far that you really can analyze primary textures. What we do, we are analyzing reviews. So there are millions of written book reviews in the internet and we have an AI which analyzes those and extract the emotions out of the reviews. So we don't go for the primary literature. So for the text of the book, we go over the reviews and then now ha know how the emotions are, which readers feel or felt. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see, see, see. Um, for me, so basically you're not going through the books. You're analyzing the emotions in the reviews. Um, was it hard for you to teach an AI emotions or you just w work in the pattern? Yeah, that's similar to that. That's similar to that. Look for those words. Did, did you start out right there? 
we, we started with that and it works kind of good if you have a lots of emotion, uh, lots of reviews. So if you have like over 10,000 reviews for a book, those easy patterns really work good. But the big problem is that we have lots of books, which like 10 to 20 reviews. So we have an AI specialist, uh, Andreas Weiser in our team, and he specialized on one thing uh, and the main focus, which is to that we are able to analyze books with 10 or less reviews. So which really few data points. It's easy to do this with 10,000s, but it's really difficult to do this analyzing with 10 reviews. I was wondering when you're talking about 70,000 books and thousands of reviews. So there have to be a lot of people who give books reviews, but I'm wondering What's like the average number of a bestseller book, like a Harry Potter you've been talking about, of reviews out there in a very, very small print uh, publication out there? I assume sometimes there are even books without any reviews. That's completely right. Um, it's not really easy to assume or to summarize the all reviews about Harry Potter because they're lots of platforms where they published. So we assume there are over a few million reviews about Harry Potter one. So there are lots of reviews out there. There are of course, audio reviews, there are video reviews, there are newspaper reviews, and there are those written reviews from normal persons. Those are the categories of reviews. And we usually analyzing the written reviews of normal people which are saying, okay, I felt uh, the book was for me very sad or very happy. This is the easy kind of things we can do. Um, but the other point is how many reviews are there for like a non-fictional book? If there is like a photography for beginners or something where it's not really need to do a review. Of course, this is like a challenge which we have, but at the moment we are focusing on novels. And there, at the novels which are sold once or twice, there's usually more than 10 reviews there. So we are easily uh, able to analyze them. And at the moment, we have over 500,000 books analyzed already. So there are lots of lots of books which are already in our database and we're still growing. Uh -huh. Be before we get into how you recommend and how you classify the people, I would be curious, um, do you actually assign a higher priority to reviews in something like um, f uh, German newspapers, like big print newspapers, like FAZ, Süddeutsche, or magazines like Der Spiegel, who publish a bestseller list here in Germany that is equal to New York Times bestseller list. Is it that case or is like any review equal? For us, any review is equal. We say each opinion, each people who say something about the book has the same amount of worth and value for us. So there's another question which you also ask kind of uh, together, the question about bestsellers. And if you asking a people like normal people who's not reading that much, what is a good book? They usually say, oh, a bestseller. And that makes complete sense in the first thinking because those are the books which are bought the most. Okay, they have to be good, but if you imagine that you only have to listen or had to listen to the most sold song, would that meet your personal taste? I, I'm, I don't think that would be mine. So the personalization part of this is the most important for us. Bestseller lists are okay and they're good to know maybe, but they shouldn't really be the point for deciding your next novel, that your next novel should fit to your personal taste and should not be the, the most bought book. And this is what we're trying to do. We're trying to do what Spotify and Netflix is doing at the moment for moves, uh, music and video. We're trying to do a personalized book recommendation that we are really analyzing those books and we're recommending books that are matching your personal taste. This is, this is a magic combination that we know which emotions are in the books and we know which subjects, with themes in the books. And then we're analyzing your reading profile. Because in our reading uh, app and the reader app, you can enter your favorite books. And after this, we're analyzing your reading profile. And to your reading profile, we're giving you personalized book recommendations. That would be something 
I would have to ask because you already took that oh, uh, took that away from me. But admittedly, I was wondering if you just have like a lot of buckets where books and the people who like them fit in. Uh, for example, if you like Harry Potter, you also like da da da. Or is it more like, um, okay, you like Harry Potter, but you also like uh, zombie novels, zombie uh, apocalypse novels or something like this. And so that makes you a special case. So maybe you would also like that. Or is it currently more on the, if you like this, you would also like that logic? We have both logical built in our app. You can look for Harry Potter especially and you find lookalike books which are matching emotionally and thematically um, for the one book. But if you're entering your favorite books, and this is a plural, so more than five books, then we're doing this special thing. So if you have Harry Potter, for example, and a zombie thriller, we're looking for, okay, you, you like zombies and you're looking for magical um, stories. So we're trying to figure out, is there a book out there which matching those both emotions and has a theme about zombies and magic? And maybe we'll find you a book, which is really a uh, yeah, summarize of those and which has star uh, zombie elements and magic elements. So we completely building an own profile, which has both elements. You will find this zombie wizard book for me. We hope so. If there is out there, we'll find it. Yes. <laughs> okay. I see. 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 I'm talking about publications. You said there are seventy thousand books published each year. Is this just novels or also alone yeah, in Germany? Also nonfiction every year in Germany. It's a, a combination uh, of nonfiction and fiction. Yes. And now the question: Are also all those self publishers in your list that can publish via this and that platform? Mostly. Um, it's always a question of data. So, of course, we try to get most books in, um, but some platforms don't share their data. So, especially if you're writing as a, like a hobby, um, writer, then you may be publishing on Inkit. And at the, at this moment, we don't cooperate with Inkit or other platforms. Um, we have those Amazon books in our app, so you can find them, which was a kind of famous platform for authors. Um, and all books which are published through the VLB, the Verzeichnis Lieferbarer Bücher, which is a German platform, um, they are all in our books. The literal translation would be something, the central register of deliverable, deliverable <laughs> books. <laughs> that's, that's correct, yeah. <laughs> And, and the company behind this catalog is also internationally active. So, um, v MVB is the company behind them. And, um, I think they're known around the world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I see. So let me take a little bit of a leap here. Everybody who would like to use read. Oh, they can go down here in the show notes. There'll be a link to our blog post where you, of course, can find all the links and show notes from this episode, including, of course, Rido and your LinkedIn profile. Um, but I would be curious, how are you guys financed right now? Because I do assume it's nothing that generates sufficient revenue for a whole team yet. Uh, yes, at the moment we... we um... We are funded by Business Angel, but maybe we take a few steps back. Um, there was this moment when Jonathan asked me if I want to join the team and I want to take ownership of the marketing and the sales department. And I said, yes, I want you. And they asked the same question. Okay, Johnny, how are you financed? How do you want to finance the startup? And we had a very, very good situation at the moment. We were founded through um, Stipendium. I think it's... Scholarship, yeah, it's, um, the English word is scholarship from the German government it's called Exist. And it's really a great, great program because you have three people who can work full time for the scholarship. So they are founded and financed by the scholarship and they concentrate on the building the startup. So for one year, we are completely financed with Johnny, me and Andy, the K uh, AI specialist. And then we started for one full year of 40 hours, 60 hours we, uh, a week. And we made a lot of things happen. And then we got a business angel in our um, team, two business angels who founded uh, the first round. 
And at the moment, we have completely found it with this money. Um, but there's one thing which we till now wasn't discussing, weren't discussing. It's our B2B products because we found at the moment, okay, we have an app and we are really good at recommending books. But there are other players out of the market, uh, internationally and nationally, which are having book websites, bookshops, or any kind of book-related products. And, at the, uh, and one and a half year ago, we started to promote our service as a white label service. So there are some publishers, there are some web shops, which are using our recommendations for their shops. So if you're looking there for a book, you go finding Harry Potter for especially, and then we recommend the lookalike books on their webpage. And this is something which is growing quite fast and can be that we are like having a good growth, especially in the B2B market. The B2C app is a long shot. Mm -hmm. Understood. Um, uh, I do know that a lot of um, investors listen to this program on a regular basis. We had more than 30 startups being approached by our uh, by our listeners. So uh, would you be open to talk to additional investors? Um, definitely. Yeah, we like like nearly all startups, we are looking for the next funding round at the moment. Um, which is the case to complete our product market fit. And we are looking at the moment for around about 700,000 euros uh, in the next round where 350,000 is already covered. So that'll, uh, the recording is done in mid of November, 2021. It will be published in February, 2022. When the investors are listening to this, how long do they have time to get in? <laughs> then it will be kind of short notice. Um, but I think around about end of March, we will, uh, we want to finish this round. So there is some time left and we are always looking for people who are interested in our story and in our journey and want to meet us. So I just can invite you to contact us and there will be a next round. There will be the next chance to jump in. And if you want to support us in one way or another, you're always welcome. Uh, our table. Sure. And down here in the show notes, there's the link. Um, also, at the beginning, we've been talking about this interview is in cooperation with the Content Shift Accelerator program. And I would like to ask for your experiences with the Content Shift Accelerator program, except for that you got uh, your final award at the Frankfurt Book Fair, which is just a place to be for every book lover. I really love it. They have still a lot of physical books and very interesting stuff there. That's that's completely right. And the book fair was a very great moment, a great chance for us to meet all those people which we have been in digital contact for over two years now, to just meet them and greet them, have a coffee with them. It was really pleasant for, uh, to meet most of them. So there was a chance like one year ago to apply for the Content Shift Award. And there was over, I think, 40 or 50 startups which applied. And the good thing for us, it is really based on the uh, digital uh, publishing theme. So it's about publishing. It's about innovation in the public publishing industry. So we had a very good fit with our business models. Um, so we want, uh, we awarded for the first 10 startups, the finalists, and then we uh, took the next step to the five last finalists. And then we had a few workshops, which really blowed our mind because we met at those workshops great people out of the whole industry, like uh, people from Talia, um, from Lehmanns Media, from MVB. We just not only talked to any people, there was a leading board there, people who really know the industry, who really could help us with projects and could give us great introductions. So alone this workshop, those three days which we worked and meet and had workshops together, they were completely worth and they valued a lot for us. Mm -hmm. Just only three days workshop worth participating. Very good closing words. Only thing left for me to say is best of luck. Good luck with the funding round and let us know how you guys doing, especially when you expand into English language. We will. Thanks. It was a pleasure to be here. Totally my pleasure. Thanks. Bye bye.
Bye. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.